Welcome to Shri and Kira Live, the voice of passionate action, bringing fresh perspectives and timeless wisdom for today's shifting paradigm. Now, it is your moment to open your mind, relax into your body and spirit as we explore the greater meaning of your now experience. Bringing wisdom, laughter, and clarity, here are Shri and Kira. Namaste, beloved ones, and welcome to the Voice of Passionate Action. I am wisdom teacher Sri Ram Ka. And I am Master Lady Kira Ra, and we want to take this moment to just say welcome to Sunday, welcome to May, and welcome to Passionate Action. Uh, if this is your first time here with us, we are so grateful to have you here. And please remember that there is robust chat happening everywhere. So Sri, there's robust chat everywhere. Everywhere. Official Sri and Kira YouTube and variety of Facebooks. We want to tip of the hat to the Sign Network for picking up this uh, broadcast and, and we welcome you. Be part of the conversation. Take responsibility for your fun. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and remember that uh, over at the YouTube channel, Official Shri and Kira, which if you're not a subscriber, get there now, subscribe. You want to make sure that if you have a question for Shri and I during the live broadcast, which hopefully you're with us live every week right here at noon Eastern time, then go ahead and put it in the chat at YouTube. And Jess goes ahead and she sends that to us. We are not in the live chats anywhere so that we can be be right here with you. And, you know, speaking of being right here with you, are these not the most gorgeous orchids you have ever seen? <laughs> I, had to, I had to just share these with you. These grow wild right here at Tosa Blue Mountain. And in the energy of the May spirit and the energy of this extraordinary collaboration with the Sign Network, John and Summer and all the beautiful beings that are saying hello today, Thank you for being and yes. welcome. Welcome to this celebration. So, Shri, I think we need to dive right in. Absolutely, because we're in the middle of May. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> now, guys, I know quite a few of you last week just was sharing with me that there were quite a few of you that were saying, hey, where's the usual predictions? Where's the usual format of the show? That's all right here. And remember, your questions matter. That's why we take them live during the show. Any of the content that we're talking about, any of the things that are on your mind that, that if we have time to squeeze in, we are happy to share with you. And so today we are focusing on this mid-May experience that is all about can humanity accept peace? So let's bring our hands to our heart. Let's just bring our hands to our heart. And I'm still kind of settling into our heart space. Yeah. Wow. Hmm. So as we're settling into our heart right now, Shri, would you guide us in a deep Avesa breath? Absolutely. All right. So it's very important when we inhale, we set the intention to recognize the divine. Ave, hail to the divine. And on the exhale, we release all resistance. Ah, be the empty reed. Here we go. Let's do this together. Ave. So. And we smile. Because when we smile as we release breath, we send a signal to the universe that says, we are here, we are ready, we are open, guide me. <laughs> and so as humanity is diving into this profound moment, as we are collectively bringing our hands to our heart, for those of you that were with us last week, we were so blessed to celebrate and consecrate the Pyramid of Peace. And this pyramid of peace is the first of 12 that will be built around the world. And three are already allocated. There will be one at the beautiful Lowell Bay property in Merida. As a matter of fact, that's the next pyramid that we'll be breaking ground on. And then there will be one at Tosa La Laguna, rising from Lake Atitlan, Guatemala. And that means there are nine more places around the world nine more beautiful places that are calling out for this incredible unification of peace energy. And last week, we did have a slightly different experience with those of you that have been with us for many, many years, because that's how important that ceremony and that groundbreaking was. Yes. And to really bring that wrapper together, and I find it fascinating that as we are here, as we are celebrating the indigenous, as we are rising this beautiful moment of unification, 
as we all stand here as the sea of neutrality, offering the energy of balance and the upliftment mm -hmm. of consciousness. It is stunning. And we're going to talk extensively about this, and I'm going to show it to you in the Ascended Numerology and how it all comes together. But it is stunning that there are a few elites with big, arrogant egos sitting in Switzerland right now determining your future if you let them. And so it all begins with, are we ready to accept peace? Mm -hmm. And can we accept peace? So we want to celebrate with you that the universe is already giving you more signs than you may be aware of, right? That just this week after our miracle ceremony with all of you and our, and our first uh, sine wave experience as well, we had a bona fide miracle happen here. And our beloved Kyla, our, our lovely, beautiful, one of our permanent on-site residents here at Toasted Blue Mountain, she was the one who first noticed it. Mm -hmm. And so we made a one-minute video because what a better way to open up this celebration today than with sharing with you what happened because we took that moment last Sunday. And I and I do want to give an extra bump out to sign because I know that together we are better. You know we're together, that together we are better. And we're proving that immediately. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and, and, and before we show you this one minute video, I just want to remind you that we are enthusiastically celebrating the Pyramid of Peace, the construction, this first ever in the world. It will be the most potent, powerful harmonizer. <laughs> it's not like I, it's surreal. the three P's. <laughs> I, I, you know, we did not plan on doing this, guys. It's surreal to us. Uh, uh, this 72 this foot is tall like... pyramid is, is radiating <laughs> such an energy of harmony it's outside amazing, of all emotion, right? just the peace of beingness. And and so when we uh, uh, consecrated this last Sunday, right here, with at you, this time, with you, hopefully you were here, uh, it began to bring in this energetic at the site. Tangible, guys. I mean, you can whew. feel it. Even though the physical isn't there, it, it, the intention is already manifest. And we're going to show you what happened so, in the sky. So here you go. Watch <laughs> this video. This happened. We did our celebration on Sunday. We broke ground on Monday. Uh, actually, we didn't break ground until Wednesday. And this happened the Friday. Next the, yeah, virtually the, first, the next the day. First, yeah. It was the first day that the bulldozer showed up and they honestly broke ground. First minute this happened. All right, here we go. A little video to enjoy. that as much as we did. That was an incredible affirmation. You know, that is the gift of rising consciousness. When we when we say yes to the miracles that are happening, when we say yes to the abundance, you know, these beautiful little orchids that you're looking at here, what you need to know is they are the size of the tip of my pinky. That's how little that flower is. And yet they are so extraordinary and they're wild all over our mountain. A miracle. Your presence here right now a miracle. Yes. Your incarnation right now, for those of you that, that may be the first time here, the sacred sequence of incarnation is what brings you into this exact potentiality because you agreed to be right here, right now, because this moment has arrived. So there are so many convergences. There are so many things that are happening. So how does all this come together into May 
right now. So, Shri, let's show them the um, May up-level calendar. There we are. All right. So, this is the... <coughs> excuse me. The up-level calendar for May. Now, you, what you'll notice is that... In fact, let me read this uh, uh, beautiful statement at the beginning and get us uh, uh, lined up with the harmony of May. With the Merkaba fully illuminated, the ignition of the Taurus is co-created from a pure center. The energies of peace, Shanti, love, Bhakti, and joy, Ananda, arise and assist to stabilize the ascended presence. And as you gaze into the art that is behind the numbers representing the days, you will see represented for you the Taurus field, the balance of the male and the female, and the energetic that responds when hearts open in balance. So as you're gazing, as Sri was sharing, look at the combinations of the sacred couple energy. This is about May has been all about walking the walk and the divine mirror being in front of you. Remember, the ascended code for this month is a five, which is the energy of our eternal life restoring itself. And the consciousness energy that we are all carrying is the consciousness of choice. Humanity is carrying the consciousness of choice whether they're conscious of it or not, right? So first and foremost, if you've never seen an up-level calendar before, please go to shriandkira.com. They're available for your Shakti Exchange donation. Remember that 100% of anything that you ever would uh, offer as a Shakti Exchange at Shri and Kira is donation receivable. Shri and I are ministers who donate 100% of all that we are to all of the communities around the world that we serve. And this calendar I put out every year near the end of the year only started happening three years ago because of the up level we are in. And if we look at this week, look where we are right now. We are here on 522. This is not an accident. 522 is the energy of purity standing in its choice. It is that moment between that stunning lunar eclipse and the illuminated new moon, that moment of the middle, that moment of the presence. And look at the watery energy of the sea of neutrality as it's all about active presence. We're dealing with our feet, right? We're dealing with the fact that all healing begins at the feet. Remember the lost books of the Essene. All healing begins at the feet. Lost Books of the Essene. That series is free at shrinkcura.com as well if you don't know what we're talking about. So as you're gazing at the bottom, as you're gazing at this week, 22, 23, 24, I want you to look at the 25th because the 25th this Wednesday, and, and you, you've just got to love, Shri, that it's in the Wednesday and that we are here birthing this together right now, that this Wednesday is very much about the dissolution of the ego in the presence of your divine nature arising with the laughter that the drama or the illusion or anything that would ever seek to let you for even a moment believe that you are less than has its opportunity to really dissolve. And we're already in that energy right now. And I want you to just really feel that because the power of today, the power of coming together in the infinite presence of the five, right? The living onk presence of the five, in the energy of the two plus the two, which has been radiating and mirroring itself mm -hmm. all this year. Because remember, this year is not a foregone conclusion. Right now, we're only able to sustain through August. We're just trying to get September 22 here. That's why the Pyramid of Peace is so powerful. That's why coming together June 22nd is so powerful. That's why coming together July 22nd, August 22nd, culminating right here, September 22nd, in that pyramid matters because today is 522. And when I take the infinite presence of the five and I add the cross of perfect balance as the four, we arrive into September at an equinox 
that is mirroring what happened in March and will finally bring the stability to the planet so that the December moment will open. And instead of humanity collapsing into 2023, we are literally able to rise. So I want you to take a minute, just breathe that in. Let's do an Ave Saw breath on that. Just really notice what you're feeling as you receive that. Mm. Because remember that the yoga of self-ascension, the reason that we all come together is to remember to trust you more. There is not anything that can ever be said to you that can disturb your peace unless you invite it to be. And the blessing of that disruption is the opportunity for the mastery presence to come forward, to put its arms of compassion around that third dimensional ego self that's throwing a tantrum, right? And loving it enough to say, I am here. You are safe. And to know that in this moment of upliftment, the sacred sequence is screaming for you to have the most amazing life. The law of instantaneous manifestation, and especially in May. Remember, go back and watch all of our shows this month to date, right? This month of May has been all about you will be right in front of the sacred mirror in everything. And so it's an opportunity to go, thank you, universe. Thank you for showing me any rough edges. Thank you for showing me anything that wasn't ready. Thank you for showing me that I am here. Thank you for the blessing of connecting me with those that connect me with those that connect me with those because as we link arms together, we are better. To know that the illusion of greed and competition are just that. Illusion. To, it's an illusion. And that jealousy is the greatest illusion of all because it is a self-inflicted wound that we carry over and over again. And then we wrap our arms tight around it in the energy of protecting that which keeps our heart from igniting into its ascended beingness. So it's a really powerful moment on the planet. And Shri, I'm, I'm noticing that it looks like we've got a whole bunch of stuff We've got some there. wonderful comments to yeah, share. So, and, and, um, and we're going to show you the, the ascended numerology, but I'm thinking maybe it's, we need to invite you guys in because it looks like we're getting pretty full of comments here. Right. So hi, everybody. Let's get you in this. Let's get going with what you're sharing. All right. We've got Gary. Let, well, you want to start the top? Yeah, I think so. Right. Well, so this is fun. Gary writes, uh, we are laid back on this float trip of life. Floating back to the ocean of oneness, trust the ride. Oh, floating back to the ocean of oneness, trust the ride. You know what, Gary? I'm kicked back with you right now. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's all just be here in this sea of neutrality, really enjoying that. Hear your favorite music. Got some babitas going. We're heading to Cancun and we're heading to Merida. So you got me on the ocean. We're excited. All right. Several people wrote in volunteering uh, uh, real estate, land, places that they want yeah, to see the let, pyramid. Yeah, and let's just please read everybody, okay. Shri. All yeah. right, so Mona, Mona writes, India is a must for one of the 12 pyramids. Oh, absolutely. It's where in India. Yeah, yeah. We'll yeah to, yes, yeah. yes. And so absolutely, we know that as well. And uh, let us all, as we are here right now, as these intentions are coming forward, let's give them the moment they deserve. So thank you for calling forth our beloved mother, India, because those of you that were with us yesterday in the Ascended Abundance Experience journey, remember that we were sharing Mm -hmm. That in 2012, when Mother India, when that Kundalini moved from the Himalayas and came over here to the Andes, what everyone forgot was that the Kundalini could not move from the Andes without Mother Ganga infusing it, the creator, the flow, the water of life itself. And so over here in the Andes, when that Kundalini with that Mother Ganga arrived, she discovered a very masculine, very traditional Andes mountain Amazon experience. And this beautiful creator goddess came in and said, yeah, I'm not bowing to you. <laughs> and they have been dancing for 10 years. Mm -hmm. from 2012 to 2022. And that is why it is this year right now. That is why the water is here. That is why our dear friend Yacu Perez is all about Somos Aguas. We are water. Mm -hmm. 
This is that moment of the unification so that India herself may stabilize. Yes. Because as you all know, I, I am an indigenous woman who carries India very deeply in her heart and soul. Shri and I have been to almost all of the Joiterlingas. And so let us bring right now, Shri, not only that, yes, there will absolutely be a pyramid in India, yes. but that the one in India who has the land, the one who is ready to help support this, will reach out to us and say, yes, because we know the universe verse will point it. Remember, for all of you suggesting pyramids, you need to remember one thing. We actually already turned down a person who was ready to throw a lot of money at the project and actually would have funded this one. Remember, this one's being funded by you. This is a 100% community-based donation project, so help us with these donations. But the one that we turned down is because you must remember, this is a profound, powerful pyramid. The golden mean ratios, this pyramid was first, the, the aspect ratio and the prototypes were all first and have been in use from Alexander Golod for many, many years. Shri and I are very blessed to have access to the pyramid near St. Petersburg. And as you all know, our world is shifting yeah. and we are out of balance. And so it is time to raise another pyramid outside of Russia. And thank God it's in the beautiful, blessed area of St. Petersburg with the center of the world pyramid. Mm -hmm. This pyramid that we are rising is going to be the master of Vesa Oasis. It will have running water inside that will be energized. This will be sacred holy water that people are able to collect as our gift to the world. Every pyramid will make that water available and have that there. These pyramids are capable of conditioning things with, with high, high incredible energy. And so this is why these places are so sacred. And I agree with you. I, I feel India, and I know we all do as well. So thank you for opening that conversation. So Shri, what, what else? Let's, let's really bring all that in. All right, all right, what's next? All right, so other people have written in, uh, Sacred Grace says Northern California needs a pyramid. Mm. And she's suggesting Humboldt County area. So remember that... Any, the, the first three pyramids are on land that Shri and I are very blessed to be the custodians of, and that is authentic, sacred, indigenous land, and that these pyramids are being built by indigenous. We can, we can, there's a lot we can do with this to really integrate the materials of each place. So it's important that where these pyramids go need to be on land and with funding that from the people that are ready to say, yes, we have a group or we've come together. And then for all of us as community to meditate in the master pyramid, because this is a powerful grid of energy, my angels. Why do you think that full circle rainbow appeared directly over the site? Most profound, most yes. profound. So was... thank you. We're, we're holding every site that we're mentioning right now, we are holding in our heart. Absolutely. And uh, Baldevi writes that uh, she has a friend with property in Virginia. So what's, uh, what's coming beautiful. alive here is your intuition. Each one of you, your hearts and your intuition are going, oh, I see it here. See, I see it together here. we are better. And this is May. <laughs> May is what? May is like boots on the street, guys, this, this week in May. Remember, it's all about the feet and all healing begins at the feet. It is is our active presence of passionate action that calls forward the law of instantaneous manifestation because it is anchored from the space of abundance for all in the trust and knowing of that as truth. Now, I want you to breathe that in because it is uniquely different from activism, which is still based in a polarity experience as all isms are and must be. We all rise through spiritual activism. And then as our consciousness ignites, we pop into ascension awareness, which is when the activism releases and the smile of the transcendent all engages. So that's what these pyramids are also helping more to sustain because every one of them will be a master of Asa oasis. So how extraordinary is that to have these 12 master of Asa oasis go up and then from there the centers can be supported by these pyramid energies. 
You know, the water that is conditioned in these pyramids yes. is vibrating <laughs> higher than any other uh, water naturally found yes. on the planet. And what this does is it is a signal to your DNA. It restores Look at us. balance. <laughs> I mean, it just... And, and the balance means greater health, greater emotional stability, greater resilience, greater physical energy. All of these are the natural byproducts of attuning with and aligning with the frequency radiated by these pyramids. Mm. Each one will be a gift to the actor acupuncture meridians of the earth and to the peoples that are walking on the earth. With and the and earth. with every one, you know, even with just this first one, even with just breaking ground, I know you're already feeling it. Sri, let's continue. All right. Lots more wonderful cheering here. Rock. Okay. Rachel writes, uh, I let go of the protective tears last week during the last Sunday ceremony when we broke ground. Thank and you. she shares there was a great deal of joy. And Tibosh Tatia says, this is validation that we now are walking on the Holy Land yes. all over. I have chills. Earth. Are you, are you, do you guys see the chills? I mean, I, do, I have chills everywhere. Wow. So uh, we, we love these acknowledgments and Woo! blessings. Thank you for sharing. Here's a couple of more. Here we go. So you guys are going to make me cry. <laughs> wow. God. Amazing. Rainbow Circle was what? a dance of holding hands and joy. It was truly an embrace in, and, in and a radiation way. of that unity energy. And, you know, in that unity energy, when you just said that, I saw a whirling dervish. Uh, when you yeah, just yeah. shared that, I saw a whirling dervish all in white, um, just as you shared that. Yeah. How beautiful. Thank you. All right. And Leslie says, wow. wow, wow <laughs> I'm <whoa>. so moved. <laughs> and uh, Laura writes, uh, uh, hi, Shri and Kira. After studying your material, I was wondering if there is a connection between the number 13, Krishna, and the blue starboard. Of course. What are your thoughts? <laughs> Look what we're wearing today. I'm just going to, I just love you so much. Do you think we all have enough blue on? Plus, Shri, can you show them or no? Okay. My husband has a new tattoo that will blow your mind. Ooh. And I don't, I don't think your shirt will show it to them today. We'll see. But only because of what you just shared, we weren't going to show it yet. And um, we've been talking about how much we love Shree's blue skin. And uh, <laughs> this beautiful, there it is. So you might have to stand up, but are you ready, guys? There you go. Send some comments in. Is that, we're beginning the, <laughs> the integration of all three. And you're absolutely right, my love. And and um, when I get to the Ascended Numerology, and we'll, we'll go back to that in just a few minutes, um, it's going to make even more sense. So, yeah, the answer is yes, of course. <laughs> absolutely. You know, and one of the things that... Um, and you know I'm a Gita scholar, right? So, you know, of course. <laughs> it's important to recognize that human consciousness took birth through the most basic of levels. And we evolve through the mud, just like a lotus flower lifts through all the murk and gets to the top of the pond to feel and be ignited and expand in the yeah. sun. The radiation of the light is a gift of recognition of the truth of the essence that is in each and every one of us. And so as we gaze out into the world, it's important to continue to radiate that love, that trust, that peace out into the the world, yes. just like the sun ignites a smile in many of us as when we say, oh, what a beautiful day. Oh, what a beautiful being. As we radiate that, we help to resolve and heal the victim energy that is part of the mud that we must evolve through. It's yeah. very basic. When we, we, we grow up in a very egocentric you know, kind we're of reality. Do, we're going to do a two-second victim re, re, rerun, right? Okay, here you go, guys. So what do I do, Shri? I double-click there? Right there. Okay, there you are. So there you go. Let's do the two-second. All right. So... It, so many people are still learning this lesson and bless them and help them and, love and, them. And that's why they're here. And thank God they're here. So the victim energy is, is that energy that says something's been done to me. And of course, the abuser energy is, is a dancing with the victim and in runs the rescuer energy, which seeks to resolve it. Now, remember, but, this is what everyone's born into. And, this potentiality of density requires you be born into this. And it's just simply called density consciousness. It's normal, 
but it's very sophisticated. It can get subtler and subtler, and we play the game inside. The key takeaway here is victim, abuser, rescuer is all one energy. It's it's just a matter of which face comes forward because the rescuer tries to heal the victim because it feels so connected with it. So what happens when we begin to relax into the trust of the universe, when we begin to discover our spiritual nature, we then recognize the truth is we are not a victim. We we are indeed a powerful creator. And what happens is the next evolutionary step is the victim transforms into a teacher and the and the abuser becomes the mentor, the rescuer transcends into a ascended healer. So the teacher mentor healer faces of ascended energy come forward in our world and support the the harmony Exactly. And and the reason this is so important is to remember that the sophisticated energy of victim consciousness is directly, it's, it's interwoven with poverty consciousness and is based on the energy of fear. There are, there are the two overarching energies in this potentiality that we are all dancing with, and it's either fear or trust. Mm-hmm. Everything emerges from fear or trust. Even love emerges from trust. It is peace, love, joy into the transcendence of trust that ignites the love that is empowered and balanced. Remember, it's very much like a propeller, right? That propeller on one side is love and on the other side is wisdom. But in the middle is the consciousness that holds it together. And so often, as we're looking at that victim consciousness and you're seeing the word healer thrown in there, how many healers do you know are wounded? Wounded healers attract wounded clients of equal consciousness until they grow. If, if, if someone is making you feel really good about not growing, then look at how much money you might be paying them. <laughs> because the key is you're a partner in pain. We, we all collude we all collude because we're so afraid to look in the mirror. Yes. And in this month of May, humanity has been forced to look in the mirror. There was no getting around it. <laughs> you can't hide anymore. You can try. And what Sri and I have noticed is the sophisticated rise of this spiritual arrogance. Mm-hmm. This very, and this is what has come together at Davos. And, and this is what is so fascinating is, is that uh, I actually do know one person who's there and, it, and it, breaks, it only breaks my heart that in the spiritualized arrogance of what's happening there right now, and I can say this with firsthand knowledge, they have called in the experience of waking up through ayahuasca, which is a male-based energy, a dark overnight based energy that indeed opens up fabulous things. However, it's being offered by a non-indigenous person and that's cool. It's totally cool. But what got me on that was the little aha moment was the reason they selected this person is because they're a financial advisor. So I don't know about you, (laughs) kind of felt like a conflict of humanity's best interest to me. And, and the only reason I'm sharing that with you is that is what density is putting at you. Yeah. Everything I just said, now take it and throw it out. It's freaking irrelevant. It doesn't matter. But it got your attention. And that's the part you want to look at is why did it get your attention? Why did it pull at something inside of you? What about that energy still has you looking at it in a sense of right and wrong? The moment before us is so sophisticated and so incredibly interwoven that the blessing of consciousness is the gift you can give yourself right now to break free and be clear. Only you will be able to determine the truth. 
And that's why there is so much interference around you discovering it. Mm -hmm. It is the epitome of Kali Yuga, is it not? The truth will be met with skepticism and distrust. And, and I have experienced that personally, how that, how that, can, how that reception is, is given. Yeah. Or it will be seen by the very few because you, my angels, are pioneers. Yeah. You're pioneers. And, and one of the things I love about sign, and forgive me if I say it, I think it's the blue canoe. I pray it's the blue canoe. It might be the purple canoe. I don't know because I love the graphics so much. It's this great <laughs> canoe that John has had summer and, and everything right. they're doing. That's it, right? That's, it's that simple. Yet that's kind of challenging. And yep. that's why you we're all coming together. together. Right? Let's go together. Because together we are better. <laughs> it is irrelevant what a group of people with a whole bunch of fiat think the world should do. They're going to do it no matter what. So why respond there? Come into your heart right now. I am here as the sea of neutrality. See all through the mirror of the bigger picture is when we own, forgive them, they know not what they do because it begins with thyself. Forgive you. You are doing the best you can, as my husband always says, given the level of consciousness that you are carrying at the time. It is an eternal cycle of evolutionary awareness. Yeah. And uh, Shri, before we go to the ascended numerology, did you want to share more about that? Well, there's so many things that are percolating in this. And, and boy, and, are and, we and full. We've, we've got, got a lot. We're getting comments. to you. Actually, let me, let's just catch up a little bit on okay, this. Okay, we're going to catch up to you, and then okay. we've got to get to the numerology because it's going to blow your mind. All right, all right. Rainbow Circle and... Uh, we have so many. We're not going to be able to see them all no, now. People loving the tattoo. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Uh, is his tattoo great? And I'm loving this, too. Bye-bye, Victim Energy. Right on, Catherine. Right mm -hmm. on. All right. And Cassandra. Hey, Cassandra. Dear Shri and Kara and the entire community, I love you. Love you. Love you. Hey, thank you, dear. And thank we you. love you. Love you. <laughs> As she continues, thank you for the yoga of self-ascension. Oh, honey, that thank is you. the bridge upon which I travel whenever the ego wants to claim dominion. Ooh, I want to. I want to say. I think we that. all need to bow before you on that. Can we all just say, "Wow"? Right on. So I, I just want to offer one more thing for Please, all of you out there. Please, because that's rich, right? It's absolutely critical that we cultivate the witnesser energy inside. So this is this is what gives consciousness its oomph. Mm -hmm. Awareness is a quality of uh, so many creatures, but consciousness, there to be is. awake to your awareness, is the gateway for your upliftment. And the victim energy is a natural conclusion of a consciousness that hasn't fully awakened to the truth that we are a spiritual essence. And this is where she talks about the yoga of self-extension being a bridge. Because the ego-based reality is the starting point of life in a body, is life in flesh, okay? And we, we, you know, look at the babies sucking on their toes and fingers and getting to know their bodies. And we're so identified with our body. And then we become really identified with our emotions. Right. And, and then it, it keeps the getting The five more, medicines of the it, yoga of It keeps refining. And then, uh, you know, as the abstract thinking comes Mental. in, oh, I am this. Well, we're more than all of that. Those are just lenses through which we can experience, mm -hmm. which is great fun, isn't it? You know, great fun. And so the ego is your friend for as long as it can be in the journey. And then the dominance of the ego must relax to allow the soul-based consciousness to come forward in order to continue the expansion of peace, love, and joy. That's your mastery presence. The ego is invested in separation. Has it tries to, to learn to play well with others, but it still looks after its own protection. At the end of the day, it is designed, it's programmed, it cannot not do that. That's what it is. Right? That's why it's a smile. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to do, right? It's never personal, right? And so as we awaken and begin to it's move so funny, out really? of, of the polarity <laughs> of positionality and into the unity consciousness that right? is the truth of the fabric of the universe. And so much more fun. It's the unity that allows the individuation to birth. And so as we begin mm. to align with that, then our ego comes into relationship with our mastery. 
the true essence of who we are. And we love our ego. We say, thank you for playing. Thank yeah. you for helping me get here. Right? We don't have to do battle with it. It just needs to be in a healthy relationship. And then the journey can refine further. And then we find peace. Deep, right? Deep peace. And breathe that in. We find peace. Because at the end of the day, and I'm going to put up the Ascended Numerology to share this with you. At the end of the day, peace is about the first chakra of this physical reality, this body, and the singularity of a potentiality. It is about the root chakra finally feeling safe enough to trust you. It is about you knowing you are safe in the world. You deserve, because you were born period period and a story there it is hear it again and receive that you deserve because you were born you are a gift you are a radiance you are a master and this egoic shell this body of form is ours to command once we wake up to the mastery presence that has the empowerment to command the ego so that the ego can actually do what it wants to do which has have a great time <laughs> and it all begins with knowing you're safe just to be yourself and that's, you know, that's why Sri and I have traveled the world so much. That's why we've lived among the indigenous for so long. That's why we've been in our own little, you know, bubble assisting so many to feel good about just being themselves. And that's why the world is doing everything it can to separate you from knowing how amazing you are. To think that there is a rift within you that needs to be healed or a law should cure. Mm -hmm. My angels, that's just density playing out. Stay right here and thereby, the law of instantaneous manifestation calls together the people, the resources, the meaning, everything. That pyramid of peace, that huge circle rainbow, and I mean, that was literally directly, we, we tried everything we could to get those pictures, right? With the sun in the middle, talk about the raw presence, right? That wasn't even our consciousness to build six weeks ago. No, no. I, I may, maybe a month Maybe a month ago, this started really flooding in, and it's because of you. So I want to show you the numerology, and then we're yeah. going to we're gonna go back to you guys, because the we're May left, Ascended yeah. Numerology is so powerful. So for those of you that are not familiar, Ascended Numerology is the original system that incorporates the full wheel of 13. It is very much like you would see a clock when you see the traditional charting for a singular experience like May on the left. And then it includes the infinite presence. And it was only after the dogmas came together that the number 13 started receiving all of its negative press. And that traditional numerology literally truncated down to the singular densified experience of the one through the nine. <laughs> Just so funny. And it totally eliminated the infinite and said, oh, you're not cosmic. You're not capable of living in more than one world. Let's really truncate everything. So this is the ancient system of the Magi. Uh, and, and you can learn more about it at treeandkira.com. And I'm, I'm very, very grateful that it was about, uh, I don't know, 15, 17 years ago when the universe uh, invited this to come back through into the universe again. So looking at May, as we talked about earlier, it's a five in and of itself. And I want you to go look over at you. If you look at you, what is five? Shri, it is truth. It is the throat chakra. The what throat is May about? The throat chakra is being able to recognize what is authentic, to be able to be comfortable with your truth, your knowingness. And to not be inhibited. It doesn't mean you have to get on a soapbox and shout your truth. It means you are empowered enough to know what is so for you. Exactly. And, and that so, can be emerging. And, and it is emergent because like it or not, that's what this month is all about. But here's where this month got even bigger is that. 2022 in and of itself, this entire year is about the restoration of balance and the creation energy, giving birth. Humanity is birthing. It is all in that second chakra of the body. And if you look over at the wheel, here is where this gets really important right now. That six 
of 2022 that bounces us into the infinite then becomes the 11 when you bring May 2022 together, but it only tops that 11 for a breath when we jump back into the infinite where we sat in infinite creation until that stunning Mercury retrograde began, which brought us from the infinite center of all that we are able to create to our 12 o'clock hour. Humanity is literally saying, look, it's go time. It's now. And this is why every minute of every day, this is not what Sri and I do for a living. This is who we are. This, there, this is the only thing that matters. We are there, guys. And here's what's so powerful. Look what just happened on the 16th. That full beauty moon, remember that moon that just activated when we were all together in this beautiful pyramid of peace ignition was literally the ringing of the gong of an up-level moment for humanity. That's why I have that big star around it, hitting that 12 o'clock hour again, but it's hitting it as the six plus six. So what did that mean? Because we are right here, guys, until the 30th, when we're just going to take our big transit back to that eight which leaves us in that lotus of creation, the choice of the presence of May, open eyes of clarity, and the smile of walking into June, knowing that the June 20, 21, and 22, that whole week, is one of the single most important weeks for humanity that we have ever collectively come together for. Mm -hmm. That's why Sri and I personally have to be in Merida at the, at the actual ancestral land that we are so grateful we are able to protect and preserve. We got drone photos yesterday. We found things on there that are blowing our minds. This is just one of the moments saying this moment matters. And there are many others coming together in June. We are all here. That's what this Sunday experience is about. Listening to you and all of us coming together every Sunday and saying together we are better. We are outside of the greed. We're outside of the jealousy. We know the law of instantaneous manifestation here as the sea of neutrality is giving everyone the opportunity to really live the life of your dreams. But there's a catch, right? You're going, yeah, Kira, what's the catch? Okay, here it is. <laughs> you got to trust. You got to trust you implicitly. And you know what? You can't fake that. No. That's something you can't fake. Because at the end of the day, to really trust means you've forgiven yourself and that you have been nakedly authentic in front of the mirror of your own life and said, thank you. Thank you for everything, every experience, everything. And, and, you know, those of you that know me, after my fourth marriage, I was like, it, that's it. I'm over. <laughs> I'm done, right? I, like this and that. Everything was leaving mm -hmm. my life. And it was that moment where you realize that the only thing you have ever had in common with everything is you. You are the common denominator. That's the moment victim consciousness goes, because you're not afraid to look at you. And May is a month where humanity, humanity collectively is being forced to look at itself mm. as the <clears throat> individual is seeking dominion in the bodies of form. The conscious awareness is the blessing that calls forward the creation outside of that paradigm for the first time. And that's why we're at such a special moment. We have had many other experiences of expanding consciousness. And this is why deep within inside of you, you have this anxiety because you know what we've done to ourselves before. Or you wouldn't have connected here, right? So the reality for you is that deep within, your consciousness has already taken you further than you have ever gone before. And hence, you are in this borderlands of sanity experience, as are most who are at that experience, as Sri and I navigated about three years ago, seeing this would be coming. And so right now, you're, everything that's ever been is challenging you. And one of two experiences is going to happen. As you say, yes, <laughs> right? As Lesson 5, Lost Books of the Essene, go read it, shreencare.com, it's free, go read it. When you become that lion coming out of the woods, there will always be the three energies that will meet you. And right now, humanity, 
is coming out of the woods in every way. So the first energy that greets the lion, so imagine you're this beautiful, majestic lion that says, oh my God, I remember I'm a beautiful, majestic lion. Wow, why am I hiding out in here when there's that fabulous, big, beautiful uh, field out there and lots of other lions? And it's like, hey, you go bounding out. Hey guys, I'm here, right? So there's those three energies that are going to meet you. So the first energy that's going to meet you are those other lions out on the field going right on. Get up hey, here. Come, let me give you a hug. Reinforcements, <laughs> you know. Hey, what? You know, let's have fun, right? Welcome. Let's catch up, right? And hey, you know, collaborator. Mm -hmm. Collaborator. We're not taking. We're collaborating. And so that's the first thing that'll greet you. But right next to that will be the hunter. The hunter's the one who sits at the very interesting level of the spiritualized ego at the edge of the forest, very much seeing that, very much describing it, usually with very eloquent language, but at the end of the day, without the courage to actually walk out. So they must hunt you because in order to validate themselves, you must acquiesce back to them. Mm -hmm. So they will tell you why you're crazy. They will tell you why you will fail. They will take shots at you. They will say terrible things to you. They, and it will come from people that you love. It will always first come from those you are closest to because that's the gift. That's part of the gift that they are playing in your life. Whenever any comes to interrupt your journey, that's your moment to decide right then and there. And as Archangel Zodkiel shared with Sri, when Sri asked him about sin, if there is one sin, to use the words of this realm, it would be to interfere with the path of another or to allow another to interfere with your path. And in those moments when you are hunted, it comes down to your passion. Mm -hmm. Because one of you when, you, are, when you are attacked, that is an energy of density. And so your passion lifts through that, smiling and holding the one, while the master receives the energy to be able to communicate in a way they can understand. Right? That's the lion, lioness. Mm -hmm. And then the third energy is the one that's just going to take a direct shot and try and kill you. Believe it or not, it's that easy. And so how do you, and, and kill you means kill, kill, your, kill, kill all that you are. It's the one that says, I'm going to repel. It was ob it, it's a deep fall back into victim consciousness, very deep back into the woods. Yeah. And so one of the things that's important to remember is that as we claim our power, that yes. radiation of energy, remember you are your aura. Your physical body is suspended mm -hmm. in your energetic cocoon. And as we align with our greater truth, as we align with our authentic mastery, our aura expands, it reaches out, it bumps into others, and others are either going to run away in fear, then let them go heal themselves. They're, they're going to want to attack you or they're going to want to celebrate and be with you because they are digging it. You're being... And that's it, right? The key is that once you honestly say yes to you, and that's what, remember, this week in May, why are we sharing all this with you? This is Feet on the Street, guys. Passionate Action Week. Don't be afraid. What is it you've been dreaming of doing, saying, sharing, being? Do it. Yes. Right? It's a month of choice. And this is our last full week, which is why you've got to be here next week because what's coming is crazy. And Shri, I want to share. We have a fabulous sharing here from sure. um, Suzanne. Hi, Suzanne. And I love what she's sharing here. She's saying, once you understand the victim triangle, good point, right? You see it everywhere. Yes. And it's true. And that's the blessing because when you witness it, right? Remember, it's about that witnessing. When you witness it, what you're saying is, okay, I get it. It's never going to be personal. It's just the consciousness of this experience. And so as I lift my consciousness, I am able to not only free myself, but through my presence, I free others. Right. And so I love it because she says, understanding it allows you to, and then she has in parens, forgive isn't quite the right word, but at least to be more gentle to those who are stuck in that energy and to always remember that all is therefore to fully release that consciousness. And I'm going to, we didn't plan on this, but do I have it here? I think we do. Uh, maybe we don't. Okay. Never mind. I was going to share with you the, um, the witness witnessing. So what's important to remember is that as we are walking through this moment right now, bring your hands to your heart. This is taking us a breath. And invite yourself to actually find the gift, the joy of really knowing 
You chose to be here right now. I mean, unequivocally. And to see that as such a great celebration, because it is. Yes. Right? And then as you discover that, notice what you're noticing in your body. Notice how you feel. And as you do that, make sure that you're holding the greatest compassion for you. And that's the moment where you will first discover the lift from the third dimensional witness into the fifth dimensional witnesser of that witness. And this is a practice and it's easy to learn. And it, it's about inviting that because as many have been stabilizing in the compassion of that fifth dimensional presence, the fifth dimension itself will hold because only you can live through it. That's what consciousness is inviting you to do right now, to stand up and claim your seventh dimensional presence can only happen when we release judgment and call in the smile, knowing, and presence, not the words, the smile, the knowing, and the presence that together we are better, that there is more than enough, and to really trust every moment of active presence. And to remember, there's a great difference between if it's meant to happen, it will. I'm just going to kick back. And if it's meant to happen, it will. Okay, that is one way to do it. Or, right, I will actively call forward that which I am. And forgive me for the little voice thing, you know. I'm just trying to make two different yeah. distinctions here. That there are many who really interpret if it's meant to be as non-action. It is your creative mastery presence that commands the body of form, reshapes it, reverse ages it, and is able to then take that active inspiration, thereby creating things that may seem out of thin air because all you're doing is accessing the infinite potentialities. That's the world we're in right now, but it's so vastly unique. That can be a little scary, right? Absolutely, because we're moving out of these um, uh, beings that are tied to uh, positionality, uh, cause and effect, and us versus them, and all of the, those are all uh, concepts of consciousness that mm -hmm. hasn't broken through mm -hmm. into the quantum reality that we are love and we are infinite. Mm. And as we hit that threshold on David Hawkins' work, the threshold is at 500 on his levels of consciousness. Beneath 500 is 99.99% of humanity as of the time that he was writing. Let me and show this to you real quick. So this is on the left. This is the yoga of self-ascension. That's the spiritual awakening pyramid there on the left. And the log and the other is Shri's combination of this with Hawkins. Let's just take one second, Shri, and then we've got a couple of great comments. Okay. So what's important is you take a look at the levels here. Then these levels are objective. You can verify them. Is that when we are in the 400s, you're in the principle-based life. You're in the highest possible activism where you're trying to be inclusive and balance the world and you're living according to certain principles. However, the fullness of love has not yet anchored. There's still a positionality of right and wrong. As we move into 500 and above where love, gratitude, and joy become the most common uh, emotional slash beingness experiences, then we are aware of of the unity and the essence that it is the very fabric of life Whew. is love upon which allows the diversity to express. Oh, the fabric of life is love that allows the diversity to express. I hope you got that. And if not, rewind. Come no. watch this again. Write that down. Another Shriism hits the streets. Well, Shri, I love that so much. Why don't, can you read that? Which one are you pointing the, to? The last two here are just so okay. beautiful. We just have a, a moment or so with everyone. So remember, you want to be with us. <laughs> hey, get to shriankara.com. Make sure you are registered for Monday Magic at the oh, very least. And be with us we every take Sunday. Deeper. Right, plan all, on being right. here every week. We hope you're with us. All right. Catherine writes, I love these sharings and I am so grateful. What an amazing time to be alive. Yes, Catherine. I love you, Shri and Kira. And, and we, we love, love you. you. <laughs> 
And Linda Perry shares. Hey, Linda. Uh, love you, Shri and Kira. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Angel. And we thank you We are so grateful all. for each and every one of you who has so kindly given your attention, your love, to be participating. Yeah. And this is what Kira was touching on earlier. Life is participative. Get up and follow your passion. Yes. Your passion is compassion that is activated by heart. Not oh. judgment, heart. And in there, the passion will always steer you through the woods to ever greater expanded states of being mm. and service. Yes. From Tosa Blue Mountain, right here in the heart of Ecuador, where one day we hope to hug you in person, to your home right now. We love you so much. We'll see you next week. Namaste. Thank you for joining us at Shri and Kira Live. To have your questions answered, send us an email to guest at shriandkiraradio.com and check out more information at shriandkira.com. See you next week. Namaste.